For those of you my age or older, in the 90s, the TV station Nickelodeon began Nick at Night. Yes. <laughs> Showing reruns of old TV series spanning from I Love Lucy to All in the Family to The Golden Girls in the mid to late evenings. And when I was in college, we would stay up until 11 to unwind after our busy days with the Golden Girls. <laughs> and so that TV station still persists in doing this today, and it remains a place to find comfort in familiar settings that we may have grown up with. It's a place to disengage with the harsh realities of a now nearly unrecognizable world. It's a place where the world can actually, be made, actually make sense and problems can be solved in about a half hour <laughs> with nostalgia that speaks to easier times. And so often I find myself seeking the blue glow of the TV light at night for comfort, easy laughs, and predictable plots and characters. Today's story of Nicodemus could perhaps be described as a first iteration of Nick at Night, as one of my colleagues reflected earlier this week. <laughs> I know, weird, right? Look at that. Uh, Nicodemus seeks out the light, the wisdom of Jesus under the cover of darkness. And he hopes to find some comfort, some predictability to better understand the signs he has seen in a world that increasingly did not make sense to him. Now the challenge for Nicodemus is that he preferred to be stuck in reruns from his own religious understanding in the predictability of his thought, his own human knowledge, and that of his educated brothers in the Sanhedrin. He'd rather do that than to engage with God, who is calling him to something new, something mysterious, something that does not fit into the box he had constructed around God. Now that is about as far as I can stretch that metaphor, and it might have been a little too stretched already, <laughs> but it can perhaps lend a little insight into our world and how this story relates to us. Now when Nicodemus approaches Jesus, Jesus responds with a phrase that can be interpreted in two ways, that one must be born from above, which also means born anew. And Jesus said that one needs to be born above or born anew to see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus was an educated man. He would have known these two meanings. Yet he chooses the literal path and cannot fathom how one could be reborn from his mom in an almost comical response. And Jesus goes on to give more examples using language and ideas that Nicodemus would have understood, yet it's still too much for him to comprehend because he's so wed to his own understanding. He cannot get past his own lack of imagination. Now maybe we can see ourselves in Nicodemus just a little bit. We have our own quests to wrap our minds around that which is confusing and disappointing and downright makes no sense in our world. The ways that we as humans destroy creation and dehumanize one another, the ways that tragedy and trauma can enter our lives for no discernible reason. We want so desperately to understand, <laughs> as if that might give us some semblance of control over the situation. And so we may be so focused on making sense of things that we might miss the opportunity to truly understand that we cannot understand and we will never understand. What Jesus invites us here is to a shift in perspective, a perspective of God's perspective, which requires that we must do the difficult work of entering into the unknown, entering into mystery. Because as the psalmist tells us in Psalm 139, your ways are not my ways, O God. When I was studying theology years ago, we would all get to the point where human knowledge could go no further, and there was really no real answer. And then we would call it mystery. And it used to become a joke that if you did not know how to answer a parishioner's question, or if you didn't know an answer on an exam, you could just say, it's mystery. <laughs> and while it seemed like a cop-out in certain situations, and please don't call me on it when I do this with you guys, <laughs> but. I have to say that it's actually the deepest truth. 
It is mystery, and try as we might to categorize things and put words around things, we cannot fully comprehend the mind of God. And that's okay, because it's not a requirement for God's love. Thomas Aquinas, doctor of the church and considered one of the greatest Christian theologians by many, wrote volumes and volumes of theological tomes that have greatly influenced philosophy and theology. His seminal work, Summa Theologica, was over a thousand pages long, and he wrote this in the Middle Ages, so just imagine. Yet he never finished it, noting three months before he died that his work was all straw in light of the mystery of God. Karl Rahner, one of the most influential theologians of the 20th century, said something similar, that at the end of the day with his work, he must just bow down to the holy mystery of God. Now, neither of them was denouncing their work, but they were putting human understanding in its proper place. Even the greatest minds, theologians, polymaths, should point us to the limits of our understanding and to that mystery of God. Because we don't need to know, we only need to believe, as Gavin so beautifully pointed out last week in his sermon. Yet that can be the most difficult thing for us humans to do. We want meaning, meaning, excuse me. We want meaning. We are born of flesh, yet we are also born of spirit. And we keep being transformed by that spirit if we allow that to happen, that spirit given to each of us in our baptisms. The God who is present in the actions of Jesus brought Jesus into the world to save the world, not condemn it. We all know that famous verse from John 3, 16 and from every football game we've ever seen. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son. We know. But the second part of that, verse 17, that God did not come to condemn or blame, but to save, can be harder to hear because we as humans want justice to look like what makes sense to us. And we have set up our social structures, our religious structures, to act out of a narrative of blame and a culture of condemnation for those who are different, for those who don't fit into the box, for those who are not part of the ruling class or race or gender or immigrant status. But our creator does not operate this way. Our creator does the exact opposite. And to quote Nicodemus, how can this be? And how many times have we uttered the same thing when faced with tragedy or our own daily losses and frailties and struggles? As humans, we want to know so badly, but we don't need to know everything. Because we have a God who blesses us despite our limitations. We have a God who watches over us when we sleep and keeps us in his sight. We have a God who wants us to surrender our own understanding so that we may have abundant life in Christ with him. God doesn't expect us to get it, but he does expect us to trust, to try to trust at least, to believe, to be born from above, born anew, born of the Spirit, because then we can engage our imagination and God's dreams for us and God's dreams for the world in which we live. Nicodemus comes along in the gospel to embody that human desire for knowledge that can become a stumbling block. And I find myself struggling with that stumbling block all the time. And it can keep me on the surface watching the comfortable reruns of my own understanding of God, the box that I have created, so that I don't have to go deeper to attempt the hard work of surrender, transformation, and humility. What Jesus wants from all of us is transformation, is a change of heart by stepping into the unknown with God, by unlearning all the boxes and categories that have been constructed by us and for us, which only leads to the worship of ourselves and our worldview. We are not called to keep seeking comfortable, predictable reruns in response to the unknowable in our lives but engage in real time with a real God who loves us just as we are in this messy, unpredictable, desperate, and beautiful world. Our God never requires us to have special knowledge to be welcome at the table or be welcomed in the beloved community. 
This Lent, we may need to ask ourselves if the gospel is not bringing about awe and wonder, if it is not challenging us to transformation or surrender to the mystery of God, why not? The story of Nicodemus invites us to actively choose curiosity over comfort, the forest for the trees, and mystery over human understanding. This Lenten season, let us pray to unlearn all that keeps us from the unknown by engaging with the mystery that is Christ crucified and the loving God who sent him to save us. Amen. <laughs>